Hey everyone, I'm David, welcome back to Mark Space. Two prototypes of the Future Attack Reconnaissance Aircraft or FARA program proposed by the US Army in 2018 have been unveiled. The prototype airframes of the Sikorsky Raider X and the Bell 360 Invictus can be seen that they both have jaw-mounted cannons and built-in weapon racks. The Raider X was designed with two coaxial rotors and a single pusher propeller increasing flight speed while the Bell 360 uses a traditional helicopter layout. FARA will assume the role of armed reconnaissance, replacing the OH-58D reconnaissance helicopter that has been retired for many years. Similar missions are currently carried out by UAVs RQ-7, MQ-1C in cooperation with the AH-64 Apache. FARA could replace a large number of Apache helicopters. To simplify logistics, the U.S. Army required both new helicopters to be powered by General Electric's T-901 turboshaft engine. But there have been delays in the development of the T-901, and no engine is currently available. The earliest test flight of the two helicopters was therefore delayed until the fall of 2023. General Electric's T-901 beat Pratt & Whitney's T-900 to win the Army's improved turboshaft engine program in 2019. However, the T-901 engine is still being tested and the total test time is expected to be close to 5,000 hours. The US military's AH-64 Apache and Black Hawk series will be equipped with new T-901 engines to replace the existing T-700. Together with the US Army's FARA program, T-901 production is expected to exceed 5,000 units. The T-901 is only 48.2 inches long and 25 inches in diameter, but the maximum power reaches an astonishing 3,000 horsepower, which is 50% higher than the previous T-700. But the fuel consumption is also reduced by 25%, which is quite excellent. In terms of power alone, the T-901 engine is undoubtedly the strongest model in this class. After the new engine is installed, the flight performance of helicopters such as Black Hawk and Apache will be greatly improved and the range can be increased. The Raider X prototype made by Sikorsky has not yet installed the main rotor, but its design concept can already be seen, including side-by-side two-seat cockpit, front three-point wheels, built-in weapons, and jaw-mounted machine gun. The Raider X is designed by rare rigid coaxial rotors plus tail propulsion, nearly twice the speed of traditional helicopters, and has a new open system design that allows for rapid upgrades and the addition of emerging technologies. The Raider X is equivalent to an enlarged version of the S97 Raider. Compared with the S97, the Raider X is about 20% heavier and has a takeoff weight of 12,700 pounds but the rotor diameter will not exceed 39 feet to meet U.S. requirements for moving between buildings in urban combat. Raider X continues the basic aerodynamic layout of the S-97 with numerous radar and infrared stealth improvements to enhance battlefield survivability. S-97's first flight in 2015 and maximum flight speed was more than 200 knots. It's exceeded the 180 knot speed required by the FARA program and far exceeding the top speed of conventional helicopters. The S-97 adopts a rigid rotor instead of the traditional hinged design of the helicopter. It relies on the rigidity of the composite material to overcome the tension force generated by the rotor at high speed, which improves the maneuverability of the helicopter and allows the S-97 to reach 3G force. Because of the use of rigid rotors, the upper and lower rotors can be closer together. Without the feeling that the Camop helicopter's rotors are high, it looks simple and neat. For stealth and reduced flight resistance, the Raider X has eliminated the external weapon rack and has a large built-in one behind the cockpit, which can be extended when necessary to launch missiles, rockets, and drones. This weapon mod can also be dismantled and turned into a transport helicopter, carrying up to six people. Even in troop transport mode, the cannon in the lower jaw can still provide some base firepower. The Raider X emphasizes the conformal design. The surface of the fuselage is smooth. There are no protruding sensors, weapon racks, and antennas. 
and the raised ridges on both sides of the fuselage can also reduce the radar reflection area. The jaw-mounted 20mm machine gun rotates 180 degrees back to hide the barrel when not in use. The Raider X uses a T901 turboshaft engine with a maximum power of 3,000 horsepower. The exhaust of the engine has also been carefully designed. The long and narrow exhaust pipe is hidden in the left ridge of the rear fuselage, and the downwash of the rotor is used to quickly reduce the temperature of exhaust, reducing infrared radiation. This design was originally used on Sikorsky's RAH-66 Comanche. In the ongoing Russian-Ukrainian war, the Kamov's Ka-52 gunship did not perform well and there were constant news of being shot down, which led to a bad impression of a coaxial rotor helicopter. However, the design of Sikorsky's rigid coaxial rotors is so different from Kamov's flexible coaxial rotor design. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that the two are worlds apart. The Kamov's helicopters have coaxially mounted contra-rotating main rotors, which can save the design of the rear propeller of the traditional helicopter, and can also reduce the vortex power loss and the stall phenomenon of the rear blades when the helicopter moves forward rapidly. However, the Kamov series of coaxial rotor helicopters use flexible rotors, and the range of rotors speed up and down is relatively large. The distance between the upper and lower rotors can only be widened to avoid the two rotors fighting and causing the plane to crash. In this way, the rotor mass becomes very high and the flight resistance becomes larger. However, the upper and lower rotors were still prone to collision when maneuvering violently. On June 17, 1998, the Ka-50 helicopter encountered strong turbulence and the upper and lower rotors collided and crashed. For Kamov Design Bureau, the problem with this dangerous rotor fight was unsolvable. But Sikorsky solved this fatal flaw with rigid rotors. Sikorsky launched the X-2 high-speed helicopter at the end of 2008 with an empty weight of 5,300 pounds and rigid coaxial rotors. The S-97 Raider with its empty weight increased to 8,945 pounds and it's a second-generation technology demonstrator that made its first test flight in May 2015. From there, the SV-1 Defiant and Raider X were born to compete for the Army's future helicopter programs. Sikorsky's rigid rotors do away with the traditional flapping hinges design, relying on the rigidity of composite materials to overcome the torsion generated by the rotor at high speeds. This design avoids the problem of fighting between the upper and lower rotors, the two rotors can be closer together, and the controllability of the aircraft is improved. However, such a design needs to overcome huge technical difficulties. Different from the Kamov helicopter, Sikorsky's design of rigid coaxial rotors and a variable pitch pusher propeller is actually a concept of a semi-powered rotor craft. The rigid rotors mainly provide lift, while the forward power is provided by the tail propeller. During fast-forward flight, the rotors reduce their rotational speed, acting more like wings than rotors, reducing flight drag and increasing flight speed and efficiency. This design has been verified on the X-2, proving the feasibility and excellent performance of the rigid propulsion rotors. The flight speed of the X-2 reached 250 knots in September 2008, which is 287 miles per hour or 463 kilometers an hour far exceeding that of ordinary helicopters. In traditional helicopters, the nose should be lowered and tilted forward when accelerating. When decelerating, the nose should be pulled up to decelerate by the resistance of the rotor. Not only is the acceleration and deceleration relatively slow, but also this time is the most vulnerable time of the helicopter, which is not only prone to accidents, but also vulnerable to ground anti-aircraft weapons. The Raider X, on the other hand, does not need to adjust the nose at all. It can only accelerate and decelerate with the tail propeller, which can accelerate and decelerate suddenly, increasing maneuverability and survivability. What's more, even if the tail propeller is hit by the weapon and cannot work, the Raider X can continue to fly safely, but the speed will be slower at 150 knots. That's about 277 kilometers an hour, 
or 172 MPH for Americans. However, once the tail boom or tail rotor of a traditional helicopter is hit, there is a danger of losing control. In the Russian-Ukrainian war, the Russian Mi-28N crashed after being hit by the tail boom. That's the best example 